Hello everybody, it's Shadow Boy here. And if I don't do this video, okay, if I don't make this video, um, if I have to redo it again, I'm going to fucking scream. Um, so, I'm talking today about pagan pilgrimages. And the pilgrimage I took was the Ridgeway National Trail. Now, for those of you that don't know, the Ridgeway National Trail is Britain's oldest road. It starts at Ivanhoe Beacon and it ends in Avebury. And the um, it's 87 miles um, and the, <clears throat> the actual trail itself goes through a lot of historical Neolithic um, and megaliths and monuments um, and is, in terms of the walk, breathtaking. Um, so we actually done it for a charity as well. The charity is the Woodland Trust. Um, which is dedicated to preserving um, ancient forestry in within Britain um, and it's helping its wildlife and I'm going to put a link down below as well we're going to kind of we're going to be um, it will sort of stop at some point but I'm kind of leaving it up for a while um, and we've managed to raise 250 pounds so far that's with money outside as well and probably more um, and yeah that's pretty awesome um, and the time of year we'd done it in was Lammas, and um, I don't know if most of you probably know, I was born on Lammas, I'm a Lammas baby. Um, and so, you know, it was a bit of a sacrifice of my birthday because as much as I love my beliefs, um, you know, I didn't apprehend, and as much as I'm interested in ancient history so much, I didn't actually apprehend how hard it would be. Um, <clears throat> I'm a trained dancer. I trained professionally, you know, I trained for three, well, fuck, five, six years, um, and, you know, danced professionally for a year, I still teach dance, I'm a qualified personal, um, in personal trainer, I'm a qualified fitness coach, I don't particularly use them anymore, but I've done, um, national fitness tests, things like that, you know, I work out every day, so I was like, ah, oh, I'll be fine, holy shit, um, I'm so glad that we've done it, but it was so hard, it was difficult. And the thing is, I didn't realize how hard walking would be. Like we had blisters, I had blood blisters on my feet. Um, I think I've got uh, developed tendonitis in my left ankle. My hamstrings went, uh, my hamstrings are still a bit twangy. Um, I taught my first ballet class coming back last night. That was an absolute treat because now my hamstrings really feel twangy. Um, and yeah, physically exhausting, like genuinely so physically exhausting. So I didn't realize that it would be a big sacrifice and in terms of my birthday as well. And so what was funny was that we didn't actually do any rituals really because most of the time when we pitched a tent and found our little camp, we were fucked, you know, we were too fucked. We might have been in the middle of the woods or the middle of a devil's patch, but we was too tired. We just wanted to pitch a tent, you know, have something to drink, chill out, um, have something to eat, have a bit of a giggle and go to sleep because we needed to be up early the next morning, about six to go and walk, you know, the whole day. Um, <clears throat> and it was incredible. Um, you know, uh, I kind of thought there would be some shitty urban areas, but there wasn't any really. Um, there was one towards the end that was a bit like, oh, but it was there for the whole of five minutes. It wasn't like the, the walk itself was spectacular. Um, it was so breathtaking, insanely breathtaking. And the, the just the sheer history there, some of the burial mounds we were in, were over 5,500 years old. You know, some of these burial mounds were older than the pyramids um, <clears throat> and sort of, you know, dense within the lands land landscape, dense within the landscape made by the ancestors of Britain, made by a Neolithic man, which is insane to think. Um, and yeah, it was incredible. And so, in the sense of that, Lammas is all about giving back to the land, isn't it? It's all about making a John Barley corn and, and giving back to the land, saying thank you for what we have, thank you for everything we have, we are giving back to the land. And we very much gave back to the land physically. And me and my friend have a bit of a joke where we've got a bit of a quote that says, this is the ritual, which is quite funny, but <clears throat> what it means is, 
despite us, you know, joking about being slightly lazy, uh, which we're actually not. But the, the meaning of it is really is that sometimes you don't need to cast a circle. Sometimes you don't need to lay a compass round, tread the mill. Sometimes you don't need to call corners. Sometimes you don't need to evoke spirits and summon spirits and, you know, do all these big smells and bells. You know, sometimes our actions and our words to a folk magician, you know, from a folk magician's perspective and point of view, words have power, actions have power, and they amplify out into the world, and they carry out our will. And for the sheer sake of what we've done, we very much have given to the land, has sweat, our blood, our tears. We very much have given that pain, given that suffering, and, and shown in a sense that we are, we are being very dedicated to our path, and so much so that we are prepared to physically suffer for this in order to gain a deeper connection. It's all very Catholic, isn't it? But you know what I mean? It's you are inputting physically into the land and at the end of it, here is here is some money, you know, that will help. Here is something that will help preserve this, that will help save this from mass industrialization. Here is something that's going to help this. And so that was our Lammas ritual. We stayed in some camp, well, a campsite, but we stayed in um, uh, something known as a devil's patch or a devil's plantation or um, a goodman's croft. And the idea of that, and I will do a video on these because these are so interesting, um, <clears throat> is that the farmers and agricultural workers would quite often dedicate a patch of land to the devil and other various spirits such as the Fae to avoid any mishaps with their cattle, failure of their crops. So the idea was that if you give this to the devil, he will leave you alone because you have given something to him. And we stayed in one of those. Uh, <clears throat> one of my friends, bless him, very, very psychic, was basically up all night and was like, fuck's sake, I can't deal with this, um, you know. And we all saw some very interesting and strange things there. Um, and yeah, that was that was incredible. Um, so yeah, in and I, what I would say to anybody who is um, fully bodied in regards to sort of able to, with their body, physically able to, um, go on a pilgrimage, do it. Go and do it. Um, go and take that time out of your life to do it. If you want to establish a deeper... Um, a deeper connection, go and take a pilgrimage because it is something that does bring deeper understanding and ultimately a deeper connection. And since coming back, <clears throat> I've only been back for 10 minutes, but, well not 10 minutes, but you know what I mean, about, about less than a week in civilization. Um, but I, something has changed um, for the better. Something has helped and I have gained a deeper connection and a deeper understanding, um, which was incredible. The, the landscape there was insane, like ancient woodlands, woodlands that were so quiet. When you stop talking, you couldn't even, even hear a bird sing. You couldn't even hear animals. Were there even animals there? You know, it was kind of like you knew who run the show. Basically, you knew that there was something else happening within those woods um, <clears throat> that wasn't, you know, that was supernatural or a spirit involved. Um, acres of cornfields, breathtaking beauty. The wildlife we saw, hares. I saw hares on my birthday. Um, I absolutely love hares, uh, red kites, which were huge like that, um, so magnificent and majestic. Um, buzzards, um, field mice, badgers, okay, two of them were dead, well, well, all the badgers we saw were dead by the side of a rope, which is really sad. But I was quite amazed at actually how big badgers are, like, badgers are massive. <laughs> I was like, oh shit. Um, uh, I would have rather have seen them alive, but, you know, um, <clears throat> but seeing hares, I was like, so one of my favourite animals. Um, and so walking the ridgeway, this path that the Celts have walked, the Vikings have walked, the Romans, Neolithic people, you know, um, Beaker people have walked, that all these different civilizations that have had such a mass impact on Britain and helped develop Britain. Um, was insane walking that ancestral path and what was funny was even though I did ask for it for my birthday 
I came back and I have an ancestral DNA test on, on the table that uh, my partner had gave me and I was like, um, and absolutely just over the moon because that, I found a great synchronicity within that, you know, that I had walked the path of the ancestors and now I'm going to be taking a test that's going to be telling me what percentage I am of everything, basically, you know, um, and the test will be like, you're 25% Irish, 25% English, 9% Scandinavian, rah, rah, rah. Um, <clears throat> so it'll be interesting to, it'll be interesting to actually see what it says, because a lot of the time I don't actually feel like I look um, generically English, um, whatever English looks like. Um, but I, I don't feel like with my dark hair and I'm quite, um, my skin tone's actually quite pale, but when I am in the sun, I'm like olive, like I'm literally like golden. Um, God, this sun's shining through. Um, yeah, it's like literally like bronze. Um, <clears throat> and I know that there's Jewish uh, Ashkenari Jew, which is European Jew, which stems from uh, Czech Republic, Amsterdam, and France. Um, a lot of, there are not a lot of English boys basically that have black hair, um, you know, it, it's normally brown hair, um, what a stereotypical English person would look like, um, what does English look like really, it's a sort of silly thing to say, but I hope you know, you get what I mean, um, <clears throat> but it'll be interesting and in terms of my culture I don't actually feel, there are certain parts of me culturally where I don't feel English, there is a lot of English customs where some people would be like, oh, um, don't do that, ha, ah, no, do it, like a bit passive aggressive, and I'm like, well, what, what, what the fuck do you want me to do, do I do it or not, you know, I'm very black and white with things, whereas English people can be a bit like, ha, ah, oh, like a bit sort of divery, and differing about, and it's a bit like, oh, this is fucking driving me crazy, just fucking do it, you know, if you want to do something, do it, don't like, be passive aggressive, and, oh, I can't deal with it, fuck, there are certain parts of English culture that I'm like, ah, uh, um, that feel like almost alien to me in a sense. So it'll be interesting to see what comes out, you know, um, could just be like 100% English, never know, I don't think that would happen, but you never know, you know. Uh, but it would be interesting to see, um, because I've always felt different um, in regards to how I look, um, because I don't feel like I look stereotypically English. And I say stereotypically English, because once again, what is English? Um, what does English look like? It's, it's vast, you know, um, but in terms of stereotypes, you know, um, I don't feel like I fit it, um, and culturally as well, there are, there are a lot more other things that I feel that are quite alien in regards to um, culturally, <clears throat> which was kind of a part of my next, um, part of the next part of this video, which was kind of a little bit of a rant actually about English people. Um, now, you know, I, I sort of, what's quite sad, and it's part of the reason why I've done this channel, was that I noticed how passive British people are, and particularly English people, but I noticed how passive Brits are with their own culture and their own heritage. And it's very, very sad, but there are not a lot of British people that actually know much about their heritage, much about their culture. Um, compared to like Ireland, I mean I went to Ireland and there were people my age telling me old folk tales and I was like this is amazing, why, why, isn't, why aren't Brits like this, you know. Um, so yeah, um, there's kind of, there, there was, it, there's a big frustration because a lot of people are like, you know, oh where, where did you walk and it's like oh the Ridgeway and I was like where's that and it's like oh it's Britain's oldest road, it's like, oh cool, it's like, and it ends in Avebury and they're like Avery? What's Avery? And it's like, oh, for fuck's sake, Avebury, Avebury Stone Circle, you know, like one of the largest stone circles in Europe? No? No? <laughs> it was like, for fuck's sake, guys, come on. I mean, it was a couple of, about a couple of weeks ago, um, someone asked me what Stonehenge was. She was English. And I was like, this is your heritage, this is your culture, this is your history, and you don't even know about it. Um, and it's a thing I find weird about, you know, English, British people be like, oh, the UK's shit, it's all shit, uh, the UK's a really shit place to be, rah, rah, rah. and it's like, well, you know what, if you live in, in a really industrial town, 
um, in a council estate, yeah, the UK's fucking shit. Of course it's shit. You need to actually go out. Don't just spend all your money going to Spain or Italy or France or America or, you know, everywhere else. Go and see your own land. Go and see what your own land has to offer because it's breathtakingly gorgeous. Um, and of course other lands are breathtakingly gorgeous, you know, 110%, you know. But I just, I find it sad that there are a lot of Brits that don't realise that all of this is on their own doorstep and I find it a little bit disheartening and sad and it's part of the reason why I do my channel was because that I realised from a point of British people they're shit with their own heritage and their own culture and that I want to preserve that, you know, I want to help preserve old English folk customs. Um, I say British people, particularly though I do kind of mean English people because a lot of English people are very, very passive um, which is such a shame. But yeah, it's all very negative, but it's kind of a little bit of a rant, but it was a realise, it was something that kind of uh, made it more stable, um, you know, kind of uh, sort of made me feel even more sort of um, endorsed in the view that I have towards that. Um, but what I would say overall, the trip was spectacular. The experiences I have gained some a little bit ropey, you know, some a little bit awesome, you know, I've been fantastic, you know, I've been absolutely fantastic and the landscape, I honestly, I, I would be up for doing a pilgrimage again, not yet, and I will say like one of my friends said that when you go camping, you spend like a week out in the wilderness, it makes you really humble and it does. You know, I got in my bed and I'm like, oh, fuck, it's a bed. It's a real fucking bed. You know, it's not like the floor. You know, it's like, oh, it's a warm bed. And like, I have this roof over my head. And, you know, I, I can press a button and have like hot water. And, you know, I can, oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. Um, so, yeah, you know, it's like I can have food like that. And, you know, it just made me feel so lucky and very humbling. Um so lucky in regards to, to what I actually have in my life. I am so thankful, beyond thankful for everything I have. So yeah, it's a bit of a long video, but I wanted to update you guys. I'm gonna leave the link down below um, once again. I'll probably may leave it. I haven't discussed with the other guys how long they wanna leave it as well, so we'll see. But over and out, and what I would say is I highly 110% recommend if you feel able enough within your body, physically, go and take a pagan pilgrimage. Go and plan one and go and do it and go away and take that time for your own craft. Sacrifice your comfort and see the rewards that you reap. Over and out. Peace.